My cruise in the Antarctica with Albatross Expeditions was my third time visiting the White Continent. By now I've picked up a few things about how to pack for an expedition cruise to Antarctica. I've learned what the ships provide and what you will need to put into your suitcase. This video will give you my best tips and guidelines for packing for your cruise to Antarctica. Let's take a look at what I packed for this Antarctica expedition. Now, keep in mind, I do carry on only, and I was able to get uh, everything I needed for this trip into an international size suitcase, one suitcase, and a backpack. So I'm just gonna walk around the room and I've already unpacked everything, so I'll just go through and find it and show you what I've got. Um, first of all, I brought um, a couple of my GoPro cameras and and I also use my cell phone for all my uh, video and photos. So you might wanna bring a bigger camera with a longer lens if you're a photo buff or something like that. I found coming here, I don't need um, that kind of big equipment that takes up a lot of space in my suitcase because you are so close to the animals right here. But if you do wanna get shots of the birds in the sky and a little farther away up into the penguin colonies and rookeries, uh, real up close shots, you would have those camera items. I don't happen to have those. I get everything I need done with just those two items. That being said, I do bring a hard drive to offload my footage off my cameras every night and save it so that it is not accidentally lost. If I were to drop my phone or drop my GoPro into the water, I would at least uh, have most of my stuff up to date, saved and backed up. Um, so it goes there and I can use my computer as well for my daily work and journaling and writing my notes. So most people would probably bring their computer along. So I have that as well. A big thing you're going to want to do is pack uh, layers of clothing for this environment. It's been beautiful conditions during our sailing, but you do want to layer up. So you start with base layers. I have those here. They're like a thermal that you put on your very first layer. Then you start building progressively from there. That might include some athletic shirts I bring to do that. You put those on maybe next. And these are also great because they have a gym on board. So I'll be using, I brought a, a variety of athletic shirts, socks, of course my underwear, and a set of gym shorts for that using in the fitness center. You know, your athletic shirts might provide uh, more of a base that you build up. And I'll show you more of those shirts. I'm gonna go dig out everything I have in my closet, show you all my clothes. So here we go, we got more of those clothes that can provide layers and also be worn around the ship. These are long sleeve, zip up, pullover type athletic shirts, a couple of those. And I've got my Eddie Bauer first descent pants with plenty of pockets. These are great travel pants, but they would go on beneath my waterproof pants. They do require that you have waterproof pants when you go ashore for the landings here on the Albatross strips. So you bring your waterproof pants. <clears throat> the base layers. And then I've got a couple of uh, one, one I'm wearing. This is a Columbia Sportswear type travel shirt. Vented. Also waterproof. Water resistant. Uh, it's a great travel shirt in general, but it can be bought. A good base layer underneath your parka and speaking of parkas you do not have to pack your own and bring your own albatross does provide parkas for you to use during your trip they are also yours to keep if you want but if you don't want to have the additional uh, item for taking back home you can give it back to them they will clean it and donate these parkas rubber boots are also something you do not need to bring they provide those for your use throughout the trip and uh, they're usually stored in the mud room you have a locker down there so when you go ashore and come back you just grab your 
boots from there and return them there so they're not coming up in your room tracking throughout the ship. So those are all your base layers you're going to need. And let me show you what that's going to look like as you build them up and get ready to go out on your adventures. There are a few more key items you're going to want to put on to stay warm. Um, I bought a couple styles of hat. This is like a thin beanie. It's been pretty warm out, so I can use this most days while I'm here this week. This is a thicker cap. I can double them up and use them both or one at a time. A couple pair of wool socks. Nice gloves. And I've even brought some hand warmers. I wasn't sure how cold it was going to get, what the conditions were going to be like. So this is a little bit of extra heat you can put inside your gloves or in the pockets of your parka. So you can warm up your hands there. You definitely want sunglasses, very sunny. The reflective properties of the, the white snow make uh, getting sunburn likely if you don't have your glasses on, your hats on, and of course some sunscreen. So I got a couple of sticks of the roll-on sunscreen. And also, because your lips could get chapped, I got plenty of uh, lip balm. And I also have been using these neck gaiters, which are very versatile. Throw those on there around your neck. You can cover your face when you are out on the Zodiac to prevent the uh, wind from being a nuisance. But also, it's a great coverage for your ears, neck, and face from the sun. So these are great, great things to have for travel in general, and they come in really handy down here. A little rucksack or your own personal backpack is uh, handy to have if you're gonna be bringing some items ashore, um, like extra camera gear, batteries, or some sort of things that you need to transport onto and off of the ship. A lot of people are bringing bigger backpacks or bringing hiking poles, things like that. They do provide hiking poles if you need those as well to use while you're ashore. They do not have binoculars on the ship in the rooms or anything like that. So that's something I noticed uh, you might want to bring if you're going to be going out to the outer decks or have a balcony cabin and would like to have binoculars, you should also plan to bring those. I've got a water bottle. I brought that. There are water bottle filling stations throughout the ship. Um, I've got carabiner online because I can attach it to myself when I go ashore. Uh, items are not to touch the ground uh, on shore in Antarctica. That's to help prevent the transfer of um, foreign materials onto the ship from land, and then it gets transported around the region. So they're trying to have tight, tight biosecurity measures. So an item like a carabiner is helpful so you, don't, you can't set things down, but you can still keep it secure on your person. All right, let's take a look at a few more items that I brought um, for just the clothes that I will have while I'm on the ship. This is a very casual, environment nothing formal about it so i have a pair of blue jeans i pretty much can wear every night to dinner and um, i did bring a couple other style shirts that i would have for maybe dinner time or around the ship and then i also did bring a couple of medium to light sweaters which are good to have on they look nice but they also give you a little warmth in case you're in a lounge and someone sees some whales and you want to pop outside, you're dressed a little more warmly. A lot of people are wearing their parkas around on the ship because they want to be able to go indoor and outdoor very quickly. I brought a little vest to provide a little warmth for that in case I want to have something that I can throw on while I'm moving around the ship. A couple more items I have, and they're just kind of a personal preference. I showed you the water bottle and I mentioned the the drinking stations, the water bottle filling stations around the ship. Um, but I, I brought a little uh, concentrated flavor to put in my water. And I also have these kind as well. So they give it a little more flavor and they have some vitamins and things like that. Makes the water taste a little better. So these are easy to pack and you can look for those if you like those. As far as footwear goes, I've kept that pretty simple as well. There's a spa on board and a couple hot tubs outside. So I've got these flip flops to use when I'm just walking around the decks outside or 
when I went to the spa for my massage. A couple of easily, easily packable flattened down shoes also are easy to get into the suitcase. Those are for dinner time. And my main shoe has been this product, which I'm actually kind of excited from Fitville. These are some shoes they provided for me. And I told them I'd be coming to Antarctica. I'd like to try them out. So they were excited to partner with me and offer me these to try out. They are um, waterproof. They've got a wide toe box. Uh, so you can put thermal socks in them as well. But I've used them in the gym, walking around the ship. Uh, very comfortable. Keep me warm. I traveled all the way on the plane from the States in these. So I'm going to put... Uh, link to this product in the description box below if you want to check them out they're um, a nice option to have a uh, good tread so they're actually a good hiking shoe a good work shoe um, they've been very handy for me in antarctica, antarctica as well so i wanted to show them off and that's it just those uh three items of footwear pretty much that is everything i brought not too much but it's more than enough also they do provide a laundry service on the ship so you can do a bag of laundry for fifty dollars so that could even further reduce your need to pack a lot of items. Thanks for checking out this vlog, and hopefully that helps you get prepared for your trip to Antarctica. See you in the next one.